Okay, hello and welcome to part one of this series. Um, in this video what we're going to be doing is basically working out how to get the version information. Um, but first, the first thing I want to do is explain this RSS feed that I mentioned previously. So if we just go to my browser here, you can see we're on a project files page for my plugin. Um, and as you can see, there are a big list of files here. Actually, that is quite a lot of files. I didn't think I'd done that many updates. Anyway, um, and then what we can do is use the RSS feed that this page provides. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually published anywhere, but what you can do is change files slash in the URL to files.rss. And then we'll get a feed, like so, um, showing all of the files that I have published, or that have been published under this project. And if we just view the page source, you can see the actual code this page creates, because this thing we're looking at here is something my browser does to handle RSS feeds, and this is what's actually on the page. So the information we're interested in is this, um, well, is each of these items, because each item element represents a single file upload. Um, but out of that, we're only really interested in the title, which contains the version number. You know, it, note that it might not actually be in this same format, and we're going to handle that a little bit later on. So don't worry if you've got your project name in here as well. And we've also got this link, which is the other thing we're interested in. That's the that's the actual link to the page where you can download this file. Okay, so that's where we're getting our information from, and let's just close this and go back to our code. So what we need to do is create a new class. Now oh, I should probably mention actually that I've removed all of the code from this plugin, um, and at the moment it's just the basic on enable. That's all it is. Well, that's all it ever was. But we're going to add the update check. So what we're going to do first is create a new class which is going to handle the update checking. So we're going to create a new class in our package and we're going to call it update checker. Okay, like so. And what this class is going to do is well, it's going to perform the actual update check if we request it to and then it's going to, you know, save a bit of collect a bit of information um, and, you know, make it available so that it's easy to access without having to worry about RSS formats. So what we're going to do is define the constructor which is going to take two parameters so update checker, oops not plugin, oops what am I doing? Uh, so the two parameters is, are going to be the actual plugin because we need that for the um, to get the current version and we're going to get the, pass in the string uh, sorry we're going to pass in the URL which is obviously a string to the RSS feed. And we're going to define these both as uh, class properties or object properties, both private. So first one is the plugin, which is that, and that's just this plugin equals plugin. Used that thousands of times before. And the other one is slightly more complicated. This is actually going to be a URL object that we're going to create. Oops. And we're going to call this files feed because it's the URL of the file feed. And that will need to be imported. Oops, come on Eclipse, wake up. There we go. So we need to create this object instead of just defining it like we did above. So this files feed is a new URL. And this URL object is just something we can use to open connections to you know, web pages basically. Um, and the URL has to take one parameter, which is the actual URL, the string, you know, web address. Um, and this shows an a error because it can throw an exception. So we'll just surround it with a try and catch. Um, and this exception will, you know, 99% certainly never happen because the URL that we're going to be passing in is one that we're going to define ourselves in the code. Um, so you could, if you wanted to, just remove this and have it like that. Um, but you know it doesn't do any harm, and if it does happen, people are going to want to know why it's not working. So that's going to help with debugging. So that's our constructor created. Next thing we're going to do is create a new method which is going to actually perform the update check. And this is where like the main part of our you know this tutorial is focused. So I'm going to create a new public boolean method, which is going to do the update check and return true if an update is needed and false if it's not. So the name of this method is going to be update needed. So just before we do anything in here, we're going to go right down to the bottom of the method and have it just return false by default, except we'll just spell return right. 
just so that if anything goes wrong, we don't get sort of error, you know, erroneous messages saying an update is needed, but then a broken URL. Um, yeah, so that's that. So what we need to do inside of here is get the contents of our RSS feed and then work out a way to get the information out of it. So we'll worry about getting the contents first. So the first thing we need to do is create a um, input stream that we can then use. So what? Uh, what's happened there? So we'll, the way we get that is from uh, the oh dear, I'm making a mess of this. From the URL object that we created, we do open connection, get input stream, and that gets our input stream. And what that is, is something that we can use to get the contents of the page, pretty much. So we'll define that as a variable, uh, input stream, um, I don't know, let's just call it input, like so. And that will need to be imported, um, Java IO. And again, this can throw an exception, so it'll need to be surrounded with a try and catch. So let's just fix that formatting. There we go. Oops, I just closed the class file. I don't even know how I did that. <laughs> okay, I was going to delete lines. Well, whatever. So what we need to do now is get the contents of this page and then process it as XML data because an RSS feed is an XML document. So the way we do that is using something called the um, document, I guess. So we're going to create a new document. I'm going to call it document. This is going to be equal to the stuff that we do to get this document object. And this document object, by the way, I guess I should have just mention, is something that is you know, used for working with RSS feeds. So once we've created this, we'll be able to do things like get all the tags in the code in the XML that have a certain name and you know things like that. So, um, yeah, the way we create this is using the document builder factory, and then we do new instance, and then we do new document builder, and then we do pass. Now, this pass method will actually create the XML document from you know string input, that's actual you know code basically, and it can take a few types of input. One of them is a file, not that useful to us. One of them is a URI, not that useful to us because it doesn't work over networks. Well, you know, it's not the same. Um, I don't think it is. Well, um, most useful is the input stream method. So we're going to be using that because we've defined our input stream above. That should be input stream or source, but well. So we can just pass in input like that and that will work. This document will need to be imported. Uh, just make sure you get it from the right source. It's the org W3C one. So, yeah. Oops. And then don't delete it. Okay, and this will throw a whole heap of exceptions. So, what we're actually going to do is instead of just catching each exception individually, we're just going to catch them all by doing catch exception. Probably should mention this is something that's kind of frowned upon in the Java world, but because we're handling each one in the same way, um, it's just a convenient thing to do to avoid duplicating the same line over and over again. Um, and that means that we've got an unused import now because we're not using the IO exception. So we'll just remove that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get our um, first item element and that represents the most recent file. So the way we can do that is by using this document object get uh, elements by tag name like so and we'll get all of the item tags and then from that we just want the first one so we can just do item 0 which is the first element in that list of elements and this returns a node object and we'll just call that latest file because I can't think of a better name so if we just go back to well let's just import this first and if we go back to my browser uh, let's view the page source again what we are doing now by get doing that item 0 is getting this element so now in the code oops, we're working with this bit 
So what we want to do next is just get oops, the first and second element within that, which are the title and link. So, pretty simple. One of the nice things about RSS feeds is that they're very strict, unlike HTML, or XHTML, same thing. Um, so if you look at the code of a website, for example, you'll see that it's all a bit of a big mess, usually, um, and there's loads of errors. Well, these errors aren't quite right because it's not designed for this. Um, so yeah, that's one of the nice things about RSS feeds is that we don't have to worry about cleaning up the HTML before we can process it. Anyway, let's go back to our code and we'll worry about getting the information. So what we can do is take the um, take this item element and get all of the elements within it. So the way we do that is by doing latest file get child nodes and that returns every element which is inside of that element. Pretty simple. And This returns a node list so we'll just call this children like so and then we want to take the first and second element out of this. Well there is a problem here, just import that, because if we just go back to my browser again, or my here this code again, is that there is actually a thing called a text element, and that is basically this white space here, which I can't really highlight. It's probably just this bit. So we don't actually want the first element because this is the first element. We want the second element, and then the third element is this white space again, which I can't highlight, sort of here, and then we want the fourth element. So in terms of array indexes, we want because this would be 0, we want 1, that would be ignored, and then we want 3. So let's go back to our code and do that. So now we can define a string, which is the version, and that's going to be equal to children item 1. And the way we get, well, if we just look at our code one final time, that gives us this element. What we want to do is get the text contained within it, so the way we do that is by using get text content, and then um, well we'll leave it that for now. And then we'll do the same for the version. No, we'll do the same for the link. So string link equals children item uh, three. No, three. Get text content like so. Instead of just defining these as variables in here, we're going to create them as properties of the class or the object. These are going to be private, so we'll create two strings. One called version, and uh, one called link. And then instead of just doing variables like this, we'll do this. And this. There we go. Now, like I mentioned earlier, what we need to do is replace all of the letters basically in the version number. Because some projects, like I said, well, okay, even I've done it. <laughs> um, you can see here that I've got v0.14. However, in our plugin.yml, we defined it as just 0.1. So we need to get rid of that v so that we can compare the versions correctly. And to do that, what we're going to do is use a regular expression to replace anything that's you know any letters and spaces basically so the way we do that is by using replace all on this string the regular expression we're going to use is just one that is letters so a to z and then the capitals so a to z again and then spaces and the replacement is just going to be an empty string because we want to remove them so this thing here is actually a string so don't get confused by any of that. So you can use this to you know, work with strings how you would normally. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, so that's it really. That's got the information. Then what we want to do is check to see if the version number is the same as the one in our plugin.yml. So the way we get the one in our plugin.yml is by doing... Um, actually, I think I'll leave this to part two because this video is getting a little bit too long. Um, so yeah. What we've covered in this part is how to get the information. Um, I suppose as a test, what we should really do is log this to just show that it's working. So we'll do a simple log. We'll do the version number and then the link with the space between them. 
like so. So if we export this now, um, actually we need to call it, don't we? Actually no, we'll leave this to the next part as well, because I forgot we need to set it up in our plugin class. But um, yeah, so come back for part two and we'll basically carry on. <laughs>